Hi everyone, we're excited you're here and thank you for joining us during Lab Compliance Connect 2023. Welcome to today's presentation on analytical validation for qPCR by Victoria Quiet. As a reminder, please stay tuned at the end of the event for a live Q&A session with our speaker. Without further ado, please welcome Victoria. Thank you for taking the time to learn about analytical validation consulting services for qPCR assays. On the agenda today, we're going to discuss first what is a validation, followed by different accrediting organization guidelines, and then finally, analytical validation consulting services provided to you by Thermo Fisher Scientific. First, let's talk a little bit about what is a validation. As you can see, there are many different definitions here on what a validation is. Let's hear from the FDA first. They state, a validation means establishing by objective evidence that a process consistently produces a result or a product meets its predetermined specifications. On the CAT molecular checklist, it states a validation of a laboratory test requires identifying the purpose of a test and establishing demonstrated evidence that provides a high degree of assurance that the test will perform consistently as expected. And then in terms of ISO, they state a validation is a process of confirming objective evidence to confirm that the requirements that define a specific intended use or application has been fulfilled. Overall, these definitions are going to vary slightly, but there's one theme in mind. A validation needs objective evidence to confirm that the test or method is going to deliver reliable results for the intended application. First, let's talk a little bit about different accrediting organizations and what they mean. We'll start with CLIA first. CLIA is the Clinical Laboratory Improvement Amendment. It was established by Congress in 1988. It is the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, also known as CMS. CLIA requires clinical laboratories to be certified by CMS prior to accepting any human samples for diagnostic testing. Then we have CAP, which is the College of American Pathologists. It's a group board of certified pathologists. It serves as a point of contact for advocacy, publication, learning, and laboratory improvement, as well as CAT proficiency testing and accreditation. Then we have New York State Department of Health. In the US, individual states have approval to test residents that live within that state. They have clear and very defined requirements for NGS and qPCR panels. They are recognized by the FDA as a third-party review organization to review 510K submissions. Let's line up each accrediting agency and talk about their specific guidelines. From CLIA, they are going to cover all the high-complexity laboratory experiments that need to cover in a validation. First, we have accuracy, precision, analytical sensitivity, specificity, reportable range, and interval. When it comes to CAP, all of the previous high complexity experiments I just listed are relevant. However, they have a couple more requirements, such as quality cutoff and clinical validation performance. When it comes to New York State, all of the previous experiments I discussed still stand. However, they have more specific requirements within each experiment type that need to be met. First, let's talk a little bit about CAP. In terms of accuracy, accuracy is validated by comparing results to a definitive or a reference method or an established comparative method. So for qualitative tests, we need to look at the correlation to a comparative test, where on quantitative test, we're looking for the closeness to the true result. Accuracy can be assessed by using well-characterized samples in an appropriate biological matrix or by comparison to another valid test method, such as a specimen exchange. In terms of precision and reproducibility, it must show that the test will return the same result regardless of minor variations in testing conditions that cause random error, such as different technologists, instruments, reagents, and even days. It's important to have enough repetition of samples throughout the reportable range to establish this. In terms of reportable range, each validation study must include sufficient numbers of samples to confirm or establish the test reportable range. It's important to encompass the full range of reported values. In terms of pharmacogenetic studies, 
you need to make sure you cover all the potential reportable outcomes, such as homozygous wild type, heterozygous, or homozygous variant for all assays on your panel. In terms of analytical sensitivity or lower limit of detection, it refers to the ability of a test to confidently or consistently detect variants in a background of assay relevant biological matrix, which means that you need to find your intended sample type, such as urine or swab media, and you need to spike your control material into your intended sample type to take through your extraction. It's also important to include multiple biological replicates as well as technical replicates throughout the qPCR process. In terms of analytical specificity in interfering substances, it refers to the ability of a test or procedure to correctly identify or quantify an entity in the presence of interfering or cross-reactive substances that might be expected to be present. Running sufficient numbers of samples of your intended sample type is going to help here in this experiment. You want to run samples to examine potential cross-reactivity and near-neighbor interaction to establish that inclusivity and exclusivity. When it comes to multiple instruments, it's important, even if they are identical, that there must be records showing of the exact serial number that each instrument was separately validated. For reference interval, it refers to the range of results expected in the normal human population. For the qualitative cutoff, this is for qualitative tests that use a cutoff value to distinguish a positive from a negative sample. The cutoff value is established initially using sufficient numbers of samples. It is defined during the validation and then translated in your standard operating procedures. As a recap of all of the accrediting organizations we discussed today, it is a stepwise approval based on the stringency of guidelines. So CLIA is at the bottom, and then comes College of American Pathologists, followed by New York State being one of the most stringent Let's recap on what an analytical validation is. The use of analytical technique, process, and procedure to develop and produce results in documentation form as tangible evidence assuring that all parts within the scope of a workflow are suitable for their intended use. How frequently should you be performing a validation? Well, anytime adding a new test to your menu or adding a major change within your workflow changing potential sample types from, say, urine, tissues, or swabs, to even adding a new assay to your panel. In this next slide, we have a timeline on how long it takes inexperienced consultants or DIY customers to execute a validation. We average between six to 12 months for this. For month one, we dedicate to project planning, where a laboratory is deciding on their assay content followed by the instrumentation and workflow used, then the laboratory initiates that PO process. And month two is the instrument qualification and training. Month three is pre-validation planning, where you're going to be drafting your preliminary validation plans and protocols, determining your samples, your acceptance criteria and bounds, followed by designing and ordering your controls. And month four, Hopefully, you are finalizing your validation plan and starting execution, followed by data collection. Month five is dedicated solely to data analysis. And month six, hopefully, you have finally completed your validation report and you begin clinical validation planning and testing. Then comes post-AV, where you submit your documentation to your accrediting organization and start working on the reporting aspect. Down below, we have potential revenue costs. First, you have your overall investment around $200,000 for your instrumentation and your workflow. Then you need to consider the cost for your control material, which could cost potentially around $20,000, followed by confirmatory testing, which could cost the laboratory $30,000, and then finally, the outsourcing the data analysis piece, around $21,000. On average, we help labs complete their validation process up to 75% faster on their own. Let's talk about common struggles with the validation. First, the project management piece. Managing your day-to-day -day responsibilities while developing a validation is going to take a lot of time and energy. 
Next, the control material piece. Just sourcing and identifying the appropriate controls for your panel takes a lot of time. You may need to resort to designing synthetic plasma control materials. Then once you have the controls in your hands, you have to know how to prepare them, make dilutions, and how to test them in your workflow, followed by the data analysis piece. You have a large number of runs, and it could be almost 30 different run files that need to be analyzed. So you need to know how to analyze that data and how to establish your criteria cutoff. Then last is the documentation piece, meeting requirements for SOPs and your report templates. Sometimes the assay manuals don't always go into such great detail as you would like. Next, we have the value of the upfront investment and what critical personnel you need to have during your validation. A project manager is key to this, to making sure you have designed a successful validation plan. A data analysis is necessary because you need to make sure that somebody knows how to analyze these complex data sets. Then an application scientist. It's important that you have the right lab staff in your laboratory in order to execute such qPCR experiments. AB Consulting Services from Thermo Fisher include integrated project management, data analysis, consultation, and application support. Let's talk a little bit about what AB services look like from Thermo Fisher Scientific. Our AB Consulting Services provide clinical testing laboratories with fast and cost-effective consultation for the validation of qPCR assays and panels that follow industry quality standards and regulatory guidelines. We help save you time, money, and headaches. On the time piece, you want to be the laboratory of choice for your clients, so launching your assays and panels quickly is a must. When it comes to cost, launching new assays with limiting staffing resources is going to pose a risk to your laboratory's bottom line. For compliance, your laboratory is going to face constant pressure of meeting compliance requirements. And changes in these requirements are often vague and broad, making them difficult to navigate. Why you should choose Thermo Fisher for your AB Consulting Services. First, we're going to provide you transparency. We're going to give complete visibility into the AB process, data analysis, and summarization to facilitate regulatory requirements and enable success as you move into production. Then, integrated support. We're going to provide you highly experienced scientists as your AB project manager, as well as field application scientists to support your workflow on site. We are the end to end project management support for your solutions, from sample prep to data analysis throughout the full AB. Then, flexibility and acceleration. An assessment of needs and initial consultation are included in each engagement to confirm that each lab is going to receive an optimal solution for your unique lab setup. We provide adaptable project management solutions based on your needs and your regulatory guidelines. We're going to accelerate the AV process for you with data analysis and summary documentation towards enablement to help achieve your reimbursement sooner. We have completed hundreds of AB consulting engagements, and we have a direct line to our research and development team in case you need something specific. Our AB consulting services help you implement new assays faster and more efficiently. Let's take it to the graph. On the left-hand side, we have the three to six month timeline delay if you were to execute the AV on your own. Whereas on the right-hand side, is you having Thermo Fisher execute the validation with you. You have potentially $200,000 in savings, and that's because we can get the work done for you within 10 to 15 weeks from start to finish. What happens when you purchase our AV consulting services at Thermo Fisher? First, we're going to help you decide your panel content, decide on the best instrumentation for your intended workflow, and then help you initiate that PO process. Once the instruments are on site, we're gonna provide a field service engineer to come out and install and qualify your instrumentation. Then we're gonna provide you a three-day on-site training to learn about the workflow and instrumentation. We're gonna provide a project manager who's gonna help with workflow optimization and data analysis. Then finally, the validation piece. 
Regardless if you have CAP or CLIA or New York State, we can accommodate all of your needs within 10 to 15 weeks. Let's talk a little bit about what we're going to provide you and what you're going to receive. First, we're going to provide you an AV specialist dedicated to your project. We're going to provide dedicated on-site field application support. We're going to provide workflow training, guidance, and optimization, followed by technical review with guidance around data analysis. You're going to receive a validation plan template in the form of an Excel document giving you step-by-step -step guidance and a Word document. Then we're going to provide protocol templates. We're going to give you a control package that's going to include a variety of control types, such as genomic control material, plasma control material, and whole organism. Then we're going to provide data analysis consultation. We're also going to provide final report templates and summary documentation. We support a variety of qPCR solutions with our project management AV consulting services, such as pharmacogenetic testing, respiratory tract microbiota, COVID testing, toenail fungus, urinary tract microbiota, vaginal microbiota, wound microbiota, and even antibiotic resistance. Thermo Fisher can help accelerate your launch time, help reduce your cost and transparency, and facilitate lab compliance with templates and documentation. Thank you for considering Thermo Fisher Scientific as your AV consultant. Thank you for that wonderful presentation, Victoria. As a reminder to our audience, we'll now be jumping over to our live Q&A session. We'll answer as many questions as we have time for and those that we do not get to, don't worry, we will address via the email address you provided at the time of registration. For those folks in the audience that cannot attend the live Q&A, thank you for joining us and please check back frequently for new content and presentations added throughout the year. All right, thank you again, Victoria, for that very informative presentation. Again, we will now start the live Q&A portion of the webinar. If you have a question that you would like to ask, please do so now. Just go ahead and enter your question in the Q&A box just below the presentation window and click Submit. We will answer as many uh, of your questions as we have time for. Let's go ahead and get started. The first question we have here is, please explain your validation strategy in terms of meeting regulatory guidelines. What guidelines do you use to ensure the laboratory is successful in their validation? That's a great question. Thank you. In terms of meeting regulatory guidelines, for every customer engagement, a validation project manager is going to inquire as to what accrediting organization guidelines the laboratory wants to meet. So depending on the specific organization, we would design and optimize our validation plan templates to accommodate more stringent requirements. We do rely on our laboratory partners to connect with their accrediting organization to help ensure that the validation plan design is going to meet their laboratory needs. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much. Let's go ahead and move on to the next. What controls do you use in validation? How do you ensure these are relevant for validation? Yeah, absolutely. We're going to use a variety of different types of control material. Whenever possible, we're going to try to obtain genomic DNA and RNA control material at a particular concentration. We'll have it pre-diluted for you. We will also prepare synthetic custom plasmids or gene strings relevant to a customer panel to help establish accuracy, specificity, reproducibility, limit of detection, linear range. We're also going to try and source as much whole organism controls that we can. This will help go through the extraction process to ensure that the method and chemistry we've selected for this workflow is going to be sufficient for those hard to lice targets. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, it looks like that was the final question that we had for today. Before we go, I would like to thank you again, Victoria, for your time today and for your important research. I would also like to thank the audience for joining us today and for their interesting questions. 
this webcast can be viewed on demand. LabRoots will alert you via email when it's available for replay. We encourage you all to share that email with your colleagues who may have missed today's live event. Until next time, goodbye.